Hi everyone, and welcome to The Never-Ending Story, The Cultural Evolution of Narratives, Part 3. In this lecture we'll be discussing the genre of romance, and how its cultural evolution may reflect evolved mate preferences. This lecture is by me, Joe Stubbersfield, and Jamie Tarani. Romance. Courting and mating are key themes of fiction, and a large number and wide variety of different stories feature attraction, mate competition, relationships, marriage, and infidelity at the core of their narrative. Human mating psychology is likely to be a key selection pressure on the cultural evolution of romantic tales. And romantic tales which reflect evolved mate preferences and cultural taboos are likely to be culturally successful. By that I mean that if tales succeed in reflecting these evolved mate preferences, they're likely to be selected for in cultural evolution. But what do we mean by evolved mate preferences? So a key place to start for this is the study by David Buss, published in 1989. For this study, Buss conducted a cross-cultural survey of 37 different populations, examining what both men and women found attractive in potential partners. Broadly, Buss found that men valued cues of reproductive capacity, like youth and beauty, so things that indicated fertility, while women valued cues of resource acquisition, traits like ambition, status, and wealth, things that ultimately showed the potential to provide for offspring. So a key question to think about when we're thinking about the cultural evolution of romance is do these romantic narratives reflect these evolved mate preferences? So let's look at some evidence from folklore. Gottschall is a Darwinian literary theorist who decided to examine this question of whether tales reflected evolved mate preferences using folklore. So in this study, Gottschall tested whether mate choice preferences of characters in folk tales conform to the predictions derived from evolutionary psychology. So particularly from the predictions of Buss's survey. Gottschall and colleagues tested for sex differences in mate choice criteria in 658 folk tales from 48 different cultural areas. They had 15 mixed sex readers who were asked to code what single trait seemed most important to a character in assessing a mate, kindness, wealth or status, beauty, other or not applicable. The data they gathered was based on 246 male and 278 female characters from these folk tales. Overall, they found that the male characters in these folk tales were more than two and a half times more likely to prize beauty, while female characters were three times more likely to prize wealth and status. Both men and women valued kindness highly, although slightly higher in women. These results conform strongly with the predictions of Buss's study, so it seems that, at least in folklore, evolved mate preferences are reflected in these tales. But the story is not entirely consistent, so the folk tales of some cultures, so for instance, particularly. South America showed less differences between male and female characters in terms of their preferences for physical attractiveness, for example, and also for wealth and status. But what about more contemporary tales? So Cox and Fisher examined a similar question whether 
stories would reflect, evolve, make preferences in an analysis of titles published by Harlequin Enterprises. Harlequin Enterprises is one of the world's largest publishers in general, but is the world's largest publisher of romance novels. It publishes in 114 international markets and in 28 languages. The vast majority of its audience, 90.5%, are women. So in their study, Cox and Fisher analysed over 9,000 titles that were published by Harlequin between 1949 and 2009. So they examined these in terms of the words that were used in the titles and how those might reflect evolved mate preferences. They found that the 20 most frequently used words related to long-term commitment and reproduction. They also conducted a thematic analysis and found that titles displayed themes related to reproduction, resources and long-term commitment. Now, bearing in mind that the vast majority of the audience for these stories were women, then this can seem to be consistent with the evolved mate preferences of women and that their selection of stories is in line with what we might predict based on evolutionary psychology. However, there may also be other explanations for this selection. Another key question to think about when examining romance as a fictional genre in a cultural evolution framework is whether romantic love is a human universal. So first we need to define romantic love. So romantic love is considered to be intense, erotically charged passion and powerful empathy for another. It's emotionally experienced as ecstasy and longing and imaginatively experienced as the transcendent idealization of the beloved, a quasi-religious experience. Romantic love is distinct from attraction, lust and attachment or fondness. And if it is a universal, then we might expect that romantic stories would be successful across cultures and would be successful culturally in terms of their cultural evolution. The sociobiological explanation sees romantic love as a proximate mechanism of monogamous pair bonding. This kind of pair bonding is very rare across other animals, it's something which humans do, and you can see also that these gibbons also create monogamous pairs. In this context, romantic love is thought to inhibit promiscuity and promote commitment. Cultural constructivists see romantic love as a Western literary invention dating back to 12th century France. Hunt, in his History of Western Love, suggests that the clanship structure and social life of most primitive societies provide a wholesale intimacy and broad distribution of affection. Western love with its especially close and valued ties between two isolated individuals is neither possible or needed. In terms of whether romantic love is a human universal, we also get conflicting results from ethnographic surveys. Jankovic and Fisher found evidence of romantic love in 89% of 166 cultures, suggesting that romantic love is near universal. However, Lindholm, using stricter criteria, found a mayor a <laughs> In terms of whether romantic love is a human universal, we find conflicting results from ethnographic surveys. Jankovic and Fisher found evidence of romantic love in 89% of 166 cultures, suggesting that romantic love is near universal. 
However, Lindholm, using stricter criteria, found a more restricted distribution of just 21 examples in 248 cultures. But what might the cultural distribution of romantic narratives be able to tell us about whether romantic love is a human universal? Gottschall and Nordland used 79 folktale collections from seven major cultural areas to try and examine whether there were examples of romantic love from these various cultures. They tagged 59 words semantically related to romantic love using find and replace, and had 17 coders use these tags and surrounding context to classify for the presence or absence of romantic love based on criteria of intrusive thinking, emotional dependence, empathy, commitment, and exclusivity. So these are the results of that coding, and they find examples or references to romantic love in almost all of the cultures that they coded folktales from, the one exception being the Philippines, which found zero examples. So this uh, this provides strong support for romantic love as a literary universal, as it was found in all these folk tales from a wide range of different cultures. And Europe is not exceptional in its romantic love, in that there are also references to romantic love in India, the Middle East, and the northwest coast of America. Examples of each criteria were found in different cultures. For example, the Maori myth of the sun weeping the oceans after separation from Earth shows dependence. But there are potential issues in relation to translation. All of these folk tales were translated from their, from their original languages, so they may reflect some westernization based on what they originally were like. So in conclusion, Stories dealing with romance and relationships are prevalent across the world. Key to their cultural transmission and evolution is appealing to widely held mate preferences. Depictions of romantic love and romantic partners in international folklore and romance novels reflect the predictions of evolutionary psychology, but there are still questions around whether romantic love itself is universal and to what extent this will impact on the cultural evolution of romantic tales internationally.